morning, everybody. This is Marty from Dog's Blog. In the noontime, reported the morning session of the Frank Carson et al. trial on December 13, 2018. Just as a note, uh, today's week 33, court day 115, 115. And uh, also note that that's uh, the dates that we give on our reports on the, the weeks and days are from the day of opening arguments. This thing has actually gone on for over a year now because technically the trial starts when they start limiting motions, which they started last November. Uh, so just to clarify that. So we're going f off the opening arguments date. Court scheduled to start at 9.30 this morning. The judge got here a couple minutes after that. Um, I was on the bench around 9.44. Remember, they didn't bring in the jury up until the... Um, <coughs> They're scheduled for 10.30 as they had some issues to resolve. And it's the uh, discovery on the conversation or conversations, uh, either either or, with um, Atala, Amil Atala and Praveen Singh in his garage uh, that uh, includes conversations about and with uh, Frank Carson. Um, the district attorney, um, Marlissa Ferris, said that she gave citation, but she's not 100% of the right conversation that had the recording. And apparently she made a representation in a sidebar yesterday about some of the questions that she was going to ask and the uh, conversation involved and the recording involved, but uh, is not able to uh, pinpoint it down. Percy Martinez argued defense once the wiretap during the testimony that Marlis Ferreira asked when Frank Carson confirmed about the wiretap phones. Um, talking, he's talking about Frank Carson uh, phones were wiretapped and Atala information on the body wires uh, that he gave information. Um, Mar he, Percy Martinez says Marlis Ferreira now says that Kurt Bunch had given the, uh, the witness a flyer giving him the info <coughs> that Frank Carson w w was involved in this investigation. Percy Martinez argued that the constant references that <coughs> of the homicide gives the wrong context and it's inflammatory to the jury. And they continually use the, one the, the homicide term in regards to Frank Carson. <coughs> the DA provided 53-minute conversation between Atala, Praveen Singh, and Frank Carson is not part of that conversation that he was referring to. The defense have objected to to the use of that um, recording uh, but in reference to that recording, uh, but um, Judge Inigo allowed Marlissa Ferrer to continue on. Now Marlissa Ferrer is saying they, they did have, just to clarify, they had an off-the-record kind of conversation prior uh, to going, obviously, on the record, and she had represented that she was not sure which recording it was, if it had even existed. Uh, Marlissa Ferreira said off the record that Frank Carson did not use the term uh, of homicide on that wiretap, it may not, and it may not exist at all. She wasn't really sure. Christy Martinez continued arguing, it's misconduct on Melissa Ferris' part without good faith belief of the conversation actually occurred. And after the, he listened to the conversation, uh, Percy Martinez, meaning he listened to the conversation last night, um, as it is a long conversation, uh, there's no information of Frank Carson uh, saying anything about a homicide. Is, was there uh, about a homicide at all? Judge Uniga said to Marlis Ferreira asked about um, the wiretap and investigation. Um, she did represent the Frank Carson statement was received somewhere. I believe she's talking about in a sidebar, but apparently it's not very clear to the judge either at this point. Uh, Percy Martinez says the questions asked to the witness on the stand yesterday are harmful to the, to the defendant and there's still no information. 
<coughs> and uh, Judd Deniga says, I agree with that point. You're absolutely right. Marlissa Ferreira then argued her understanding is that Tala uh, had mentioned that uh, Frank Carson said four times um, about the wiretaps and the investigation. Um, she tried breaking it down um, with the witness. She does remember some type of conversation of Frank Carson talking talking as his phone was tapped and there was conversation that concerned Mary Lynn, Mary Lynn Belcher and somebody by the name of Steve Foley. She said the homicide investigation is a term used by the witness, not her. She is not sure where Frank Carson where the Frank Carson statements are. Uh, Mar Marlissa Ferrer, remember there was a perfume saying Atala and Frank Carson conversation and talking about the wiretaps and believes that it is in Praveen Singh's house. Marlissa now admitted it was a homicide investigation when the wiretaps were attained and the, and the victim was had been gone too long just to be a missing person anymore. Uh, you know, she makes arguments sometimes that are totally contradictory what some of the witnesses have testified to, like um, Frank Navarro and some of these other officers have testified it was just a missing persons investigation. Now she's saying it was a homicide investigation, and that's the only way you get a wiretap. Is you cannot get a wiretap on a missing person case, but you can on a homicide case. Percy Martinez uh, then argued that uh, now Marlissa Ferreira is, is saying the garage conversation uh, of the homicide is applied to Frank Carson. Um, and Judge Aniga allowed Marlissa Ferrer to use this information with no conversation available to the defense at the time to review. The DA is now not sure if it happened at all. Marlissa Ferrer, meaning he is not sure it happened at all. Marlissa Ferrer argued that the homicide was the witness statements of the Frank Carson talk, not her. The defense can cross examine on him to clarify. Um, Judge Aniga this time had the reporter, court reporter, pull up um, at Atala's ye uh, testimony yesterday to clarify what was going on. Um, and so that we had a little bit of downtime in the court for a few minutes. Um, so then um, she moved on to the wiretaps. <coughs> and, um, you know, I don't ever remember this issue getting resolved, to tell you the truth. But this, um, this after having the court reporter pull up uh, the uh, testimony, uh, but they did play uh, the body wire that uh, Atala was wearing in uh, Praveen Singh's garage with a conversation with Singh, Frank Carson, and himself um, later on. Then they started talking about some wiretaps. Um, Judd said that she read um, some of this, the wiretaps Tuesday night, again last night. She does not understand the relevancy. Marlissa Ferry, she says it gives background um, that uh, Con Kurt Bunch uses uh, Atala tape as Praveen Singh and Frank Carson were both suspects at the time. Investigators believe Frank Carson was involved in the homicide in the text messages by Georgia DeFilippo and Christine DeFilippo talking about Praveen Singh coming back into Frank Carson's life. Um, I'm not really sure what that meant, but uh, I think they, they were talking about uh, Praveen Singh coming back to a uh, either being around or working with Frank Carson or something. So it shows there was a connection to Praveen Singh and Frank Carson. Um, due to the closeness of the relationship, um, Atala sent out, was sent out with a flyer to tickle a conversation. That's what the investigators do, what they call tickling. Uh, they do things to stimulate conversation. That's exactly what they did when they were with Atala and gave him the flyer to go talk to Frank Carson and Praveen Singh. Uh, all the talk was about what is going on in the homicide investigation. On 9 12 of 13, there was a call.
There was a call to Praveen Singh, and that was the same day that Frank Carson pre visits Praveen Singh's house. Um, the, this call, though, was at 9.35 a.m., same time if later on that night, Frank Carson had gone to Praveen Singh's house. They are talking about, uh, in this 9 o'clock, 9 a.m. call, they're talking about Frank Carson telling Atala and it was really confusing the way it came out, but she was, Atala and Singh were talking about to tell Frank Carson things and that they were trying to prove that Praveen Singh had information on the homicide is what Atala was trying to prove. Atala said he had left Frank Carson messages and Praveen Singh was trying to get a hold of Atala, uh, or trying to help Atala get a hold of Frank Carson with some of these issues. Now Praveen Singh has taken the fifth and may not be friendly witness to the prosecution. Uh, Praveen Singh has, really has refused a deal and Praveen Singh says that Frank Carson said he was on the property with a gun sleeping on the bus and Frank Carson said it was uh, over later Frank Carson said it was over and taken care of so Praveen Singh that Frank Carson said he was spending the night in the bus <coughs> on the property with a gun and uh, Frank Carson later said it was over and taken care of Praveen Singh made statements within the last year, June of 2018, they believe it was all foundation for a meeting with Frank Carson. The next wiretop that night was around 8 p.m. on 9, 12, or 13. Frank Carson had gone to Praveen Singh's house. Atala was going to show up while Frank Carson was there so Frank Carson could, in, could get, so he could get um, information from Frank Carson personally. <coughs> she says this is all foundation for Praveen Singh's going, uh, going to testify. She said next Tuesday. She said Praveen Singh goes to the Frank Carson with information and help on this case. Final conversation was a wiretap five days later. Praveen Singh tells Atala all because of Frank Carson that this has all happened. Praveen Singh is certain that the cops keep threatening do threatening him and everybody else do to Frank Carson. Jen Duniga <coughs> then said that it sounds like uh, Percy Martinez wanted to make address the court again. Judge Zuniga told him there's no need, so that told me right there how she was going to rule. Because um, he always, always lets her make the record when she's going to rule against them. Um, Marlissa, Judge Inga said Marlissa Ferrer is now saying to Praveen Singh is she's not sure that he's going to testify. He will be taken into custody until that is over without a deal and if he refuses to testify. In custody until the case is over. Sounds like um, Marlissa Ferrer wants to do state of mind and some impeachment of Praveen Singh prior to him testifying. Marlisa Ferreira jumped right in and says uh, Praveen Singh is um, active, is real active prior to talking to investigators, and it shows a relationship with Frank Carson. Frank Carson's meeting at 8 p.m. or later that night on is on a Saturday night. Um, Praveen Singh knows that something is going on with Frank Carson being investigated. Praveen Singh was wiretapped in 2013 and he was a major player in this investigation. Praveen Singh's protecting was protecting Frank Carson until 2017 or 2018 when he started making other comments and that's when his federal cases and stuff started um, becoming a problem for him. It shows the relationship of the defendants. Judge Iniga says um, Again, Percy Martinez wanted to reply, and she says again, don't bother. She says Marlissa Farron is trying to impeach um, a witness prior to the testimony of that witness. And she does not know what the witness is going to say. So she said it's out of sequence, it's out of order, this does not make sense to her. Um, based on Marlissa Farron's argument, uh, it may be all relevant at some point, but it's not prior to his testimony she has to, she cannot impeach him until 
he says, gets up and testifies and says something impeachable. Uh, so she cannot let statements in. At this point, uh, is denied at this uh, at this point. The jury was finally called up at 10:51 a.m. That gives them about uh, an a little over an hour of court time if they stay until noon. Uh, Marlissa Ferrer talked about. Uh, asked about uh, stopping Frank Carson Evers talked about no, I'm sorry Atala was on the stand the jury was up uh, was asking Atala Frank Carson ever talked about stopping an investigation <coughs> uh, and this led to massive ob in objections by the defense um, so that led to a different question Atala continued to record Frank Carson um, sometime when Praveen Singh was present, that occurred um, in June of 2013 to Ju July of 2013. Uh, he recorded, uh, he believes, um, one, he recorded Frank Carson one time in office um, and Praveen Singh's house uh, one time. Um, Atala went to Praveen Singh's house t with the Corey Coffin flyer to stimulate conversation. Uh, Praveen Singh called Frank Carson. Frank Carson showed up about an, uh, an hour later. This was 8 o'clock on a Saturday night. Unknown if he was still there when Frank Carson showed, <coughs> but then turned around and said, this is at Praveen Singh's house. Many family members were there. And he said that, remember, a, a minute ago he said, unknown if he was still there when Frank Carson showed. And then Frank Carson showed up while they were all there, and he was talking to everybody in the family as there was uh, several people there. And then Praveen Singh, Frank Carson, Atala walked out to the garage to look at the flyer. The flyer had a picture of Corey Kaufman on it and he was missing and all the information uh, contained within. He told Frank, Frank Carson he got the flyer from detectives at his house. Frank Carson's uh, response was that fucking bunch. He said that, Atala said that Frank Carson's demeanor changed when he started cussing at Kurt Bunch and he was mad. Frank Carson and Pre Praveen Singh talked and he said he had his recorder on. Frank Carson said they are investigating him um, in regards to someone in his backyard and now investigators are going to families, houses, um, members of his family and other families and other people's houses harassing them. He said to Frank Carson, said, uh, it's up to Atala if he wants to talk. He, he, he didn't. He said if Frank Carson didn't do anything. Um, the 2-19 of 2013 meeting with Frank Carson in his office with four others now was queued up to be played. Uh, this is the um, uh, recording that Atala wore to the, uh, there was uh, four um, gentlemen that were getting um, contacted by investigators um, about uh, mostly about the Corey Kaufman case but other things too apparently and uh, this recording was this is the recording of the uh, meeting in the garage of Praveen Singh's house that we were just talking about uh, transcribes were handed out to all the jurors and the translators to follow along very thick trans transcription and the gist of what I heard, and I didn't hear all of it because we're going to continue it after lunch, was that over and over, Frank Carson, one of the first things he says after greeting the people is if, if they're going to, they don't have to talk to the investigators they want, um, but if they do talk to them, always tell the truth. Do not lie because that's what's going to get you in trouble more than anything. Um, and then he, again, later on, he says, um, the first thing you don't do is don't do anything wrong. Don't do anything wrong. But they will try to pretend that they are your friend. They'll buddy up to you. And then he says he's had uh, several cases pending now that he's suing the county and he has prevailed so far, meaning probably meaning he's gotten past summary judgment. Frank Har Harson also noted that the in <coughs> investigators are not real cops. They work for a district attorney. Uh, they were actually... Uh, uh, paid investigators for the district attorney's office and he t they are part of the gang task force 
and they also go after the enemies of the district attorney's office, like when, when they did Carmen Sabatino. Frank Carson also has two more lawsuits pending against them. Um, it's hard uh, to decipher some of the conversation because uh, Atala wearing the wire kept moving. Uh, something was brushing against the mic. Also, there was heavy Indian accents. And uh, so some of it was, and some of them were on the other side of the room, obviously. But they were talking about law enforcement officers um, threatening to call CPS and take their kids. And that seems to be a common theme that you hear throughout uh, much of this testimony in this case. Frank Carson <coughs> also noted that they will work on girlfriends or wives or the women to try to get them you to react and um, get them to say something or get you to react and do something um, that uh, gives them reason to arrest or do whatever they do. He also talked about he has a new attorney in his office <coughs> that is do representing two Indian business owners in Turlock. He didn't mention the names, but I assumed they were the outlaws, but I don't know. Uh, and his uh, new attorney is handling their legal issues. Frank Carson again said it's better off if you don't talk. Uh, if they put your cuffs on you, somebody was asking about what if they arrest you. If they go to put the cuffs on you, don't fight them. You just go with them. You're just going to make it worse if you do. Again, Frank Carson repeats, don't have to talk to the investigators if you don't want, but if you do say anything, don't say anything false. Don't lie to them. Frank Carson also told him that um, tape record any conversations just in case. Uh, the officers may not be accurate or outright lie um, in their reports. You, you may say that uh, if something happened on Sunday morning and they may write down Sunday night, they can make a legitimate mistake or they could just uh, be trying to make it sound another way. He says they have a way of doing that. Frank Carson also said they can't get a search warrant without reason, uh, but they do lie in their affidavits sometimes because they were asking about um, what if they come for a search warrant, what if they do this, what if they do that. All parties getting advice on how to talk to law enforcement. Uh, and some, some uh, admitted they had already been contacted by investigators. Um, that was uh, the noon break at that point. Uh, we're moving. We'll probably go back at 1.30 this afternoon and listen to the rest of this. It's, a, it's, a long, it's like an hour long, and uh, there's probably another 20, 30 minutes of it left to play. Um, don't forget the podcast tonight at 6 o'clock.